Hey guys, uh, my name is Julian, trail name Sardines. I did a flip-flop uh, through hike of the AT this year, and I'm gonna talk about all the shoes that I wore on the trail. So this, believe it or not, is everything. These are six pairs of shoes. Now, I only fully wore through two of them, so don't think you're gonna go through six pairs of shoes. Most people go through like three, maybe four pairs of shoes. Um, but I'll give you my experience with all these right there. And I'm gonna focus uh, on the Solomon XA Pro 3Ds, which is uh, this pair, and the Ultra Lone Peaks 3.0s. Those are the ones that I use most of the time. I would say those, I use two pairs of Solomon XA Pro 3Ds, one pair of the Ultra Lone Peak 3.0s, and I would say that got me through maybe like 1,900 miles. Yeah, the other shoes I only used for, let's see, 50, 50, uh, 150, 250, maybe 300, yeah, the other shoe is about 300. So um, so I started with uh, these big boots. Now, I was doing the Connecticut section in January, um, so I was using micro spikes. I mean, you can use micro spikes on all these trail runners here, but um, it was just more extreme conditions. Uh, I, I did a weird order, so started in Connecticut um, in January. But these worked great. I mean, they're, they're great boots, uh, but they are heavy. Um, if I were to do the whole trail again, I would do it all in these Ultra Lone Peaks. So it took me 1,900 miles to find the right shoe for me, but um, but that's, uh, that's what it is. And I'll also show you the bottoms of all the shoes. So this is after 50 miles these right here. So these were super warm. I like them. Um, they were very sturdy, uh, you know, good waterproofing. There, there were, there were some, there was like the stream crossing in Connecticut that got pretty high up here and it was like icy. So, so I was glad I had it in that case. Um, now these, after I did Connecticut, I went down to Georgia and I hiked about 150 miles in these. These are La Sportiva, uh, the, uh, synthesis, uh, surround, GTX, they're Gore-Tex, they're waterproof. Um, these I already used like a little bit around town in some shorter hiking trips, um, but I learned that these were too small for me. Uh, I was getting, the first 150 miles, I was getting like really bad blisters in my toes, and I was having arch issues. Um, I was just using, uh, I was using the Superfeet green insoles, um, which are, the highest arch super feet ones, I believe. Um, but the, I, I apparently, I learned on the trail, I have, I have pretty high arches, so they didn't um, work well enough for me. So I'll tell you what I did in a second, but but these, uh, you know, they these are great shoes. They, they won a, you know, like a backpacking magazine award, um, and they do a good job at being waterproof without making your feet like really sweaty the way the, the Gore-Tex is. And like as you step, it like pushes the sweat out of it. It has like a neat innovative venting system. Um, so so that worked. Uh, and also I just to point out these uh, shoelaces were, they broke uh, at some point. Um, but but I wore these a lot before those 150 miles. I was using them for probably like a year. But uh, Solomon, they did offer to replace them right there. So good warranty there. Um, so those are my thoughts on these. Uh, I did see some other people with these shoes out there. They're, they're good shoes. Um, you just have to decide waterproof or not waterproof. But I'll, I'll get to that as we move down the line. So 150 miles in, I replaced these with uh, a pair of Solomon XA Pro 3Ds. And I swapped out my Superfeet Green insoles with a pair of well, sole insoles. So the sole insoles are more sturdy and they have like a higher arch than uh, the Superfeet Greens. So um, combination of this more arch support and a larger shoe size, this is a half size or larger than this, so that's a nine and this is a nine and a half, um, got rid of my arch issues that I was having. So these shoes, I use them for a good, I don't know, 800 miles, maybe 900. So these is, this is the first pair I fully wore out. Um, so you can see some of the uh, treads are completely gone on the shoe, but 
there, there's still a teeny bit in here. Um, but these these held up well. They did uh, get some holes basically on each of the sides here. Um, now, really great story about Solomon Warranty. I contacted them, said it was through hiking, and sent them a picture of these, along with a picture of the soles, and they actually offered to replace them for free, um, which was really cool. So, um, I got another pair. Now, these right here, these are the non-waterproof versions. Uh, that's nice because as you're hiking, your feet sweat and you know, they'll breathe a little bit so you don't end up with like completely soaked feet, feet at the end of the day. Um, but I thought these were like very sturdy. They're very durable. I mean, 800 miles on a pair of shoes that cost 115 bucks is awesome. Um, so really, really happy. I, I love the quick lace system here. It's very nice, you know, at night you just slip them on to go to the bathroom. You don't have to tie it. You don't even have to just leave it. You don't even have to tighten it. So that's really handy. Um, and they just held up really great. I mean, this this is fine there. You know, it's not a big deal. Um, now, uh, so this took me, you know, a good amount of miles. Now, I used uh, these shoes. These are not a popular choice on the trail, um, but I, I used these for about like 100 miles. I wanted to try them out. I wasn't really happy with their trail performance. They're ASIC shoes. Uh, the gel nimbus or shoot i forget what they're called it's something uh yeah i don't know what these are called but anyway um oh gt 2000 yeah so they're supposedly trail runners um they, they're marketed as trail runners but the tread on them i didn't know this at the time but they they just they're, they're like road tread i mean look at the difference between these right there so these just weren't that they're like really comfortable shoes um but they're just really not that sturdy like my feet were sliding around in them they're like slippery um they didn't really grip that well onto like dirt and rocks i was using these up in maine um the 100 mile wilderness so um it, you know and you got to tie them that's a little annoying the the fronts came out and these were new, so this is wear after 100 miles, um, but they're still still pretty good. I'm sure they're great for, you know, gym running shoes. Unfortunately, I got a little hole in them from a fire, so. But I also wear these around town. They are very comfortable. Not for AT use, though. Um, oh, yeah, and I also, I switched to another pair of insoles. I went to a podiatrist at one point, um, and he gave me some, uh, like, a... Uh, I think you can only get these from a doctor. They're not custom molded, but I, I forget the brand. Um, but these I found aren't as stiff as the soles, so my feet were a little less sore like next morning at the end of the day with these. So I did really like these. They're probably my favorite insoles right there. Um, now, after these, remember I said Solomon replaced the pair? So they gave me uh, another pair right here. So. Um, this is also the XA Pro 3D. Uh, I went up uh, another half a size, so this is a 10. Um, so I started with a nine, and then this was a nine and a half. This was a 10, this was a 10. Um, and I actually went up to 10 and a half, so one and a half size changes on the AT. So these are the um, waterproof versions. Uh, Solomon makes the XA Pro 3D in a non-waterproof, a waterproof uh, Clima Shield, that's the material, and the Gore-Tex version. For some reason on their website, the Gore-Tex version was less breathable than the Clima Shield. I don't know if that's a mistake or why that is. I always thought Gore-Tex is more breathable, but I got the Clima Shield. Um, I wasn't really happy with the waterproofness. Like basically I prefer, you know, non-waterproofness. Cause every day when I would finish hiking, uh, my socks would be wet, like not soaking, dripping wet, but they'd be wet and they wouldn't dry in the morning, um, you know, unless they put out the sun for hours. Um, so, so they would always get wet. Um, I also wore these shoes for about the same as these, about 800, 900 miles. So you can see some of the treads are pretty much fully worn down there. Um, you can see it kind of came apart in different areas here, but it really, the shoe, it's a really great shoe. I highly recommend this. Um, it's uh you know it held it did hold a lot better hold a lot better up in this area you can see something starting to form there you know but for 900 miles solomon replacing them for free like excellent customer service like really good you know there's some stuff there the heels same with my other xa pro 3d but hey that's it's i'm really happy with these now uh final shoe i switched to was the uh 
Ultra Lone Peaks 3.0s. Um, they do have a new 3.5, uh, and but the 3.0s were like half the cost or a lot cheaper, so I went with those. I was really happy with these. These are my favorite Appalachian Trail shoes. I would uh, do the whole hike. If I were to do the whole hike again, I would get these. Nothing against these shoes. I These were great, but I felt like there could have been something more comfortable for me. I was still getting when I would like uh, start a new pair of shoes. I took a lot of breaks on the trail, so when I would go back, I would get like a lot of blisters on my toes. So um, I think that these just have like a kind of like a tight toe box because they're really sturdy. So I would like my toes, I would get numb toes. Um, so I just didn't think it was the best fit for my shoes, but these were amazingly comfortable. Um, so I use these about 300 miles and they still have some great tread left in them. You can see here, uh, still, you know, very good. Um, so I was totally fine without them being waterproof. They just breathed and, you know, dried for the most part. My feet were still sweaty, but not as nearly as much as these. Um, and I actually used the stock insoles. I, I wanted to just try it. Um, it's only 300 miles that I had left to use with these. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't really get any blisters. Like I, before I switched to these, I had like a week off the trail and I just went like right back on the trail and first day was 17 miles. And after that I was doing twenties, like just fine. And, uh, so they were, they were extremely comfortable. I still did find it annoying to deal with laces, but Hey, you know, <laughs> that's, that's what you got to deal with. Um, so if there was a pair of these that had, uh, these that would be ideal but I guess with laces you can like you know custom like do some custom knots if it doesn't fit right to like tie it off in certain areas and runners knots different things you can be creative with that there's certain techniques out there you can research but these held really well I wouldn't be surprised if you could get like I don't know 600 miles off of them so so that's my my shoe story oh and just to comment on shoe size. So I started out with a nine, ended up with a 10 and a half. Uh, the nine was a little too small to start for me. Um, so I probably should have started with like a nine and a half. So my feet, you know, they increased basically about one to one and a half sizes. And I would feel that like I would feel as I'm getting near the end of a shoe, like, oh, my toes are starting to hit more and I'm going downhill and I would get a bigger size. But, um, you know, from what I've heard, that's because uh, your arch can kind of collapse from the repeated walking and I don't know maybe I you know didn't have the right insoles or something and you know if you get your feet right they they shouldn't collapse but but mine did um, and uh, that was fine you know no no big issues there so just be prepared for that and also your feet supposedly swell I would notice swelling in my feet when I'm when I would like come to town or something to look at my feet they're clearly swollen so you know, maybe I was doing something wrong, but it's just part of my experience. Um, I was, at first, I was definitely, at first I was definitely very, like, apprehensive about going to trail runners because all my previous hiking experience, like, I was, you know, boots, boots, boots. But I found that, um, at least with my load, I wasn't carrying too much weight where uh, I needed that ankle support. You know, my max weight was maybe 30. Well, my, most of the time I was between basically... 13 and 30 pounds and at that weight like I would I would roll an ankle sometime but it was like ow and then I would just all right I'm good and then I keep going it wasn't like injury weight so if you're carrying like a lot more than that it might be helpful to have the ankle support boots but I'm a firm believer in going you know as lightweight as possible I just think it's a better experience but it's not necessary you can carry a heavier load plenty of people do it and they finish the AT um, so the trail runners they're they're a lot lighter they breathe better. Um, I find they're more comfortable, but boots are such a, you know, boots, shoes, such a personal decision. Like do, do what works best for you. You know, I, I learned as I went. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with, uh, um, you know, switching shoes out. Uh, don't forget to contact the warranty department. Some shoes are known better for like through hikers, like, uh, as far as warranty or replacing them. They've heard that ultras, they won't replace them. Um, but Solomon, I've heard good things. So, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to make a comment here. Thanks for watching.